everyone and welcome to my sewing room. Today we're going back into PE Design software, so don't go away. So as I just said, we're going to go back into PE Design Software. By the way, Merry Christmas. It is the end of November and we're getting into the Christmas season and everybody's making Christmas crafts. And um, I had a viewer ask me about the knockdown stitch in PE Design. And I did do a knockdown stitch in the Design Center on the Stellaire already, which I thought was kind of fun to do around Valentine's Day. I think that's how long ago it was. But you can do a knockdown stitch on a towel or anything that's got um, a pile um, in PE Design Software, but it doesn't have an automatic button that you just go up to and say, do a knockdown stitch. So I'm going to show you how to do that on a towel and make a Christmas project at the same time. So let's go to the computer. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find a design that we want to embroider on this towel. So what I'm going to do is go into um, import patterns from file. And I have some Christmas designs. If I come over here and look at this, it says from folder right here. And if you drop down, you can see that you can take things from the design library, from the outline shapes from a lot of different places in your computer. But if you say from folder, then when you hit the folder here, it will open up your uh, folders that you have in your computer. And I wanted to do one from that was in the software, but I honestly couldn't find one I liked. So I went into my own embroidery patterns and you can pick anything that you have that you think would be um, fun to do um, that you need to put a knockdown stitch around. So I chose my Christmas folder and I said OK. And then the Christmas designs appeared he over here. And um, I don't know why this is thinking for such a long time. Probably because there's a lot of stuff in my Christmas folder. I'm going to do this one right here. It's a Christmas tree. And I'm going to just click on it and then left click and drag and it'll bring it right in and drop it right there on my screen. Um, and then it's not big enough. And this is actually my, let's see, this is in my design settings, my nine and a half by 14 hoop, which is my largest hoop. So that should be big enough. So let's make it bigger. So we're going to let the mouse rest right on this um, right corner and we're going to hold the control button down and you will see unfortunately my recording software doesn't change the mouse but you should when you hold the control button down see a little box appear that has two zigzag lines on it and once you do that you can grab it and pull on it as far as you want to pull on it make it as large as you need to make it and then we're going to pick it up and we're going to move it over here and drop it right here so there it is now this is a perfect example of something that if you wanted to put this on a towel you have to put a knockdown stitch around it because of all the open space on it so i'm going to hit the plus sign and come in here close see that the, if i sewed this on a terry cloth towel all the terry cloth would fold in around this and it would look terrible so we need to do something to knock down the terry cloth and still be able to put it on a big fluffy towel so what i'm going to do is Let's just go back out again. And the first thing you want to do, get your selector button, make sure it's selected. And then you're going to go up here to the stitches menu. And it's the one that says stitches, stitches. And hit that. And wait a minute, that's not right. Go back home again. <laughs> no, that's not what you want to do. You want to make sure it's selected. Come over here where it says applique wizard. And it also says embroidered patch. So we're going to hit embroidered patch. And a menu is going to open up. And this is just asking if you want to turn this into a patch, not necessarily an applique. Um, and it says satin stitch. And we're going to say no because we don't want a satin stitch. And then when you say OK, 
it literally outlines your design. So if I, again, zoom in close, you can see that there is a running stitch going all the way down and around this Christmas tree everywhere. And that's what I wanted was a running stitch to go around it. Um, but what I want to do is I want to select that running stitch. What well, see, it wants to select everything. Let me see if I click off of it over here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sewing order button over here, select the running stitch that's down here at the bottom, and drag it up here to the top. So it's the first thing sewn. Then, in order to make sure it's actually selected, I can do two things. I can either right click and choose select objects, or I can just come up here and choose this little arrow. Looks very much like the arrow up here. And when I click on it, it'll select that outline and it'll take me to the shape shapes menu and then i have a running stitch and a not sewn so i'm actually going to tell the running stitch to be not sewn and then i'm going to tell this part here to be the net fill stitch there's a zigzag net fill stitch you don't want that because that's going to do satin stitch netting i just want a regular netting stitch and then it should automatically just fill that and it's in the back part behind the design because i put it up here to the top so that works now the next thing i want to do is i want to right click and i want to copy it and then right click and paste and the reason i do that instead of say control d which is control copy it never copies it it never duplicates it in the same spot it always moves it over to the side and then i have to line it back up again i don't want to do that so Copy and paste will line it up exactly on top of it. It actually looks like I only have one there, but I do have two, and the second one is on top of the on top of the design because it's way down here at the bottom. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to move it up here to the top next to that one. Now they're together. Now what I want to do is while that one is selected, and I'm going to hit the select button again to make sure that it's selected. I'm going to come over here to my sewing attributes. When I click sewing attributes and I have the netting chosen, it gives you a couple other options. It gives you a different pattern if you want a different pattern. And it does a spacing so I can make them bigger or smaller if I want to. And it also changes the direction so I can move the direction. So it's a little bit on a 45 degree angle. So now when you look over here, see the way, let's go home and zoom. See the way there's crosses going both ways? That should do a knockdown stitch for you. So in the PE design software, it does not have an automatic knockdown, but doing it this way will create a knockdown stitch for you. So... Now that I've got that completely created, and it is red, and the Mary is red, so maybe what I need to do is select this one, hold the control button down, select this one, and change that to another color. Let's just, I'm going to make it pink because I, do, I, I still want to be able to see it. Um, but I don't want it to be this, to mix with the same color that this Mary is. Um, I also have white here. And I don't, I'm going to hit select that. Uh, let's see. Select that. Here's my color right here. And then... If I come over here, it says Isocord White. Let's just say Brother Embroidery, and let's make it green. I think I want to make it, it doesn't really matter. I'll pick the thread color myself later, but I want to make that green right now because I'm going to put this on a white towel. So the background that says pink is going to be white thread, and then um, the Mary will be red. 
then the the tree itself will be this green and then the little leaves will be this green and then it's got some berries and stuff that go on at the very end so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to save this and i'm going to sew it out on my sewing machine i'll be right back and show you what it looks like okay so i wasn't going to go into a whole lot of embroidery with this because most of you already know how to embroidery and if not you can always go back and watch some of my other videos but i did feel like i needed to show you just a little bit about what i did with this i have my largest hoop on here let me do this and i have this towel is not a brand new towel and you're going to be able to tell that on the video but i wanted to try kind of just play around with the towel I already had in the house. So, um, but it's a white towel and I have put um, tearaway stabilizer on the back. And my favorite stabilizer is called Stitch and Tear because it's got a little bit of wash away built into it. So when you wet it, it peels off a lot easier. You know, sitting there trying to pick, pick, pick. Um, but I didn't have any. So I'm just using regular tearaway. But I would really advise that you use a Stitch and Tear or some kind of a uh a water um i don't know a water based that's got part tear away and part wash away built into it there's a couple of different brands that have it um the other thing i i've done with this is i have um sprayed it with 505 spray and then i'm just floating the towel over the top i am not trying to hoop a big fluffy towel because that's going to just be a disaster so if you float it on the top and use some 505 spray it'll hold it in place so we're going to put that in here remember when you're doing a towel especially on your um your dream machine your solaire your solaris any of your top of the line embroidery machines there should be a setting hang on a minute i'm having trouble getting this guy back in here There should be a setting on your embroidery machine that allows you to raise the foot a little bit because if you leave the foot down all the way, it's going to drag across the towel and it's going to cause problems, especially when we put the wash away stabilizer on the top. And normally I do like a heat away on a towel because then I can heat it away and the stitches underneath um, the, the stabilizer underneath the stitches remains even after it goes in the washing machine lots of times. But um, this, I basically it would be really hard to make it heat away because of all the stitches and everything that's going on. So I'm going to use a wash away so it washes away. And I'm going to just float this on the top like this. If I just lay it across the top, it's going to be just fine. And then I'm going to start embroidering. Now on the screen here, I have my Christmas tree and I'm going to hit set. And the very first setting is going to be that pink, which is the knockdown stitch. But we're not going to use pink. Remember, we're going to use white because it's a white towel. If it's a blue towel, you would use blue. Try and match that thread just as close as you possibly can to the color of your towel and you'll like the results a whole lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and push start and go ahead and get this started. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished. Okay, so I hope that you thought that was kind of a fun thing to do. This is my towel, and I, yes, I know it's seen better days. If you get up really close to it, it's kind of um, a beat up old towel, but we got the point across, right? <laughs> um, but I thought it was a really fun towel to put in the bathroom for Christmas time. And as in most things, if it's a big fluffy towel, it, um, if you try and do an open design like this little Christmas tree is, it's going to come out looking really crummy. Um, but this came out looking really nice. I'm going to put a picture up into the corner so you can see a little bit closer what it looks like when it's all finished. But the knockdown stitch um, went all the way around it and sewed it down and it, and it turned out to be a very nice project. So um, I hope that was really fun for you. It was kind of quick and easy, but every time we go into PE Design software, we can learn a little bit more. And this was one of those times. So um, I hope you have a Merry Christmas and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.